Okay, we have another tool now for denoising our images. This one comes from Viralux, the same developer that gave us Hypermetric Stretch and Star Composer. This one's called Viralux Cylindrium. I think I'm saying that right, probably not. But the way that this one denoises, that this is not artificial intelligence, so there's no AI involved at all. It's strictly mathematical, like the rest of his scripts. There's no AI. Everything is done by the numbers. So let's take a look at it. My name is Rich, and you're watching Deep Space Astro. So before we start, I want to mention that if you've been using any of the other Viralux scripts that the developer Ricardo has been putting out for us, they have made a change to the menu structure where those scripts are going to be stored when you select them to be installed. So if you previously, for example, had the hypermetric stretch installed, after this change, the next time you run Cyril, you'll notice up in scripts, the Viralux scripts are no longer in the processing directory. They haven't gone away, they've just kind of been reset because they have created a submenu under Python scripts specifically for the Viralux scripts. So you will have to go into get scripts and reselect any of the Viralux scripts that you were previously using. So Star Composer, you can see everything was unselected, so just reselect them all again. There's Star Composer, Hypermetric Stretch, and silentium there's a new one also alchemy for narrowband normalization that i need to look at still both of these scripts were released today so i have not even had a chance to take a look at this one yet but once i do i'll put a video off of that one as well so for now i'm just going to leave that unselected click apply and just to show you what i was talking about now if we come back up into scripts and python scripts there's a viralux sub menu that will contain any and all of the Viralux scripts that Ricardo puts out for us. So with that being said, we're going to run through using the new denoising script on my M31 data. So I will open up my result file. This is a clean stack, nothing has been done to it. And we'll go into an auto stretch view and just go through the quick process of where you would do your denoising. This is a linear tool, which means for the best results, use it before you stretch. You can use it afterwards, it will work, but you're not gonna get the expected results if you do that. So use it before you stretch while you're in linear. So just like always for me, my workflow right now, it changes, but as of today, like I said, this is my workflow, and we'll start with just doing a quick crop to get the stacking artifacts out of the way. I am going to do my plate solving first, and then a background extraction. And it doesn't matter which background extraction tool you use. You can use the automatic background extraction script that I have up on the screen. You can use Cyril's built-in background extraction. You can use Graxpert, doesn't matter. I'm just going through this quickly to show you guys where in the workflow you would use the new Salentium script. Okay, background extraction has completed. So we're going to come up into image processing, color calibration, and SPCC and color calibrate the image. I'm gonna untick my plot fits because I don't need that. Once the color calibration is complete, I'm gonna come up into scripts, Python scripts, and I wanna sharpen the image both for stellar and non-stellar, and I'm gonna use Cosmic Clarity Sharpen to do that. Select both, I'm gonna leave the defaults, that'll be fine, and click apply. Okay, sharpening is complete, so we'll close that. So now we can come up into scripts, Python scripts, Viralux, and the Viralux Silentium. So before we get into the settings, let's talk about the user interface, the preview window specifically over here on the right hand side. The default settings that are in place right now are in effect in the preview. So if I was to hold my spacebar down, you can see it says original. So it gives you a before and the after. So that's the after with the current settings in place. If I hold my spacebar down, that's the original image with no denoising. The red box is a region of interest. So just click anywhere on your image where you want that region of interest to be specified and give it a few seconds for it to generate that view for you. And then you can see the little hand for your mouse pointer. If you hold your left mouse button down, you can pan around into that area that you have selected. You can also zoom in a little bit more or zoom back out, or you can click on the fit button and it'll fit that region of interest in the preview pane for you. So let's zoom in just a little bit so you can kind of see what's going on here. So again, that's after the denoising. If I hold the space bar down, that's before. Hopefully you can see it, I can see it. YouTube may compress it where you don't see the effect that much. So if you wanted to come back out of your region of interest view, just click anywhere on the image again. 
you can see the status is calculating and it'll put us back to the full view of the image. The other way of doing it is using this button up here with a magnifying glass. It says one to one. If you hover over it, it shows you that right now we're currently in the fit global view and it's locked, which means all these buttons are grayed out and there's nothing that we can interact with within the preview. If we were to click the button, that puts you in the interactive mode. So clicking that is similar to when we clicked a region of interest, but without a region of interest selected, it'll grab their last region of interest for us. If you didn't have a previous one, it'll just grab it right from the center of the image. But either way, using the button or just clicking on the image will take you back and forth from your full view to a region of interest view. So again, let's go back in We'll set our region of interest and go through these settings here on the left hand side. So the first one is our noise intensity, right? This is the strength, the intensity of the denoising that's going to do. So if we I'm gonna come down in here where you can see more of the detail of M31 and if I bring my slider over, give it a second to generate, you can watch the status down here at the bottom. And when it's done, again using the space bar we can go before and after. Right? You want you don't want to go too much, otherwise you end up kind of blurring out some of the details. You always want to work the slider just to knock down your noise, right? You go too much, you're going to knock down some of the details. So double click on it and it'll reset it back to the default. And then we can go down and let's talk about the next setting here, which is our detail guard. The detail guard will help you protect the faint details, the filaments in a nebula, um, some of the, the light structures within this galaxy and such. So more protection as you slide it over towards the right, we can do a before and after. And again, I know this is hard to see on YouTube, but I want to go over all the settings and at least give you an explanation of what they do. Um, I'm going to double click that one as well to put that back to the defaults. Our adaptive noise model is on by default and it's, re and it's recommended to leave it on because it's what calculates the local noise statistics for us. But again, you can play with it, turn it on and off, but it's recommended to leave it on. Our next step is our chrominance, our, our color noise. Basically, this one if we were to disable it, it's just going to do a luminance only denoising, which will also decrease the amount of time it takes to denoise the image. And then you also have your chroma strength. So the stronger the strength, the more color noise it'll remove, the lesser the strength, the less color noise it's going to remove. Again, it's recommended to leave the enable chroma noise enabled as well. And then that brings us down to our deep space smoothness, our shadows, right? So the shadow smoothness helps with preventing blur on our structures. So if after you've applied your denoising, you see some of the structures in your image starting to blur out, adjusting your shadow smoothness may help you with keeping the, the sharpness of those details. Star field handling, it uses find star, which is a, a built-in command within Cyril for the star protection. You can see where it says dot LST, which simply means if we come over into our working directory here, you can see it created a list file. So when find star is executed, it generated this list file for us in our working directory. It's how it detects the stars and then prevents the denoising and the shadow smoothness from being applied on the stars. So it keeps the stars nice and sharp, unaffected, while all the denoising functionality of the script is actually working on the, the object in the background of the image. So if you're denoising an image with the stars, as we are right now, you want to leave the use find star enabled, as well as the next option here, the auto starless detection. It'll detect whether or not, base, if it only sees a few stars, then it automatically goes into starless mode, which also means that you can use Starnet to remove the stars from your image and then open up the starless image and run the denoising against your starless image as well. So it's your choice. However you want to proceed with your workflow, you can denoise the image while the stars are still intact, or you can denoise the image after you've removed the stars but again, before you do any stretching, it has to stay in linear mode. So those are all the settings. Once you have your image denoised and it looks good in your preview, simply click the process button, give it a few seconds, and it will denoise the entire image based on the settings that you have specified. So the script has been denoised now. My next step would be to remove the stars and then stretch to starless. I'm not going to go through all that. Like I said, I just wanted to show you guys where in the workflow you would use the new script. One thing I do want to point out to keep in mind, depending on your settings and in, in the script and your data, when you come back into our auto stretch view, because remember we're still linear, right? So if I go into linear, I'm not stretched yet. In an auto stretch view, the denoising may make the image look really muddled and just overcooked trust what you saw in the preview. That's what you're going to get when you stretch. This isn't something specific to the script. This is something that happens with any of the denoising functions that we have. So whether you're using Graxpert to denoise or Cosmic Clarity, whenever you come back into Cyril with the auto stretch view enabled, 
the auto stretch view is just too strong for a denoised image sometimes. So once you drop back down into linear and do your stretching, the image will look like it did in the preview window of the script itself. So another great tool from the developer of the Viralux suite. This is a completely linear denoising tool. I think it does a fantastic job. It's up to you guys whether or not you think it's better than the AI tools that we have or any of the other denoising tools that we have in Cyril. Again, it's like multiple screwdrivers that all can do the same job and just pick the one that works the best for you, right? Before I go, I want to say thanks to all my members here on YouTube and on Buy Me A Coffee. I appreciate everybody's support. If you want to help support the channel, consider becoming a member. Like, subscribe, comment, all that interaction helps the channel grow and it's been growing and that's all you guys doing that. So I appreciate it. Thanks everybody for your time. We'll see you on the next video in clear skies.